What is the first thing that comes to your mind when I say the color green? It has to be leaves or green vegetables, right? This green pigment found in leaves is known as chlorophyll. Today's experiment deals with extracting chlorophyll from leaves. This experiment might seem a little difficult, but this is a very nice one to put up in a science fair in your school or easy enough to do even at your home. But you're advised to take the help of an adult during parts of the activity. This includes heating and boiling the leaves and the use of an alcohol, in this case propanol. The test tube and the fire should be handled with care as well. You can try doing the same with a red or purple color leaf too. Make sure to hold the test tube with a test tube holder or a piece of cloth when it is hot. Propanol is highly flammable, so please be careful not to keep it near fire. On a molecular level, chlorophyll is similar to heme, which is a part of hemoglobin present in blood. Heme is what gives blood the red color and is bound to proteins which form hemoglobin. You might want to know why you are using an alcohol like propanol to extract the chlorophyll from the leaves. Adding alcohol actually kills the leaf, disrupts the cell membranes and softens the cell walls. This makes it possible to extract the chlorophyll from the leaf. It would be great if you could try the same experiment with flowers of different colors, different types of alcohol, etc. Or even different solvents like water, acetone and so on. Why do you think chlorophyll isn't soluble in water? What would happen if it was? All plants have chlorophyll, which is generally known as the green colored pigment found in leaves. Chlorophyll is a molecule which helps the plant absorb energy from the sun. Chlorophyll uses this energy to synthesize carbohydrates from carbon dioxide and water. This process is known as photosynthesis, which is not only vital for plants, but for life in general. Since we all living beings depend on plants for our food, it can be said that photosynthesis is important for all the living things on Earth. The green wavelengths are reflected, giving that unmistakable color to plants. Since it is a light-absorbing pigment, chlorophyll is called a photoreceptor. In 1780, the famous English chemist Joseph Priestley discovered that plants produce oxygen. After a few years, a Dutch physicist, Ian Ingenhaus, discovered that light plays a major role in photosynthesis. Soon after, Jean Senebier, a Swiss pastor, found that fixed air, which is carbon dioxide, was taken up during photosynthesis and Theodore de Saussure discovered that the other reactant necessary for this process to take place was water. The final contribution to the story came from a German surgeon, Julius Robert Mayer, who recognized that plants convert solar energy into chemical energy. He said, Nature has put itself the problem of how to catch in flight light streaming to the earth and to store the most elusive of all powers in rigid form. The plants take in one form of power, light, and produce another power, chemical difference. The actual reaction takes place between carbon dioxide and water powered by sunlight to produce glucose and oxygen. The reaction is as follows. Hence, the first step in photosynthesis is the absorption of sunlight by the chlorophyll pigments. The chlorophyll molecules then transfer this light energy to chloroplasts, the reaction center of photosynthesis. In this way, that light energy is converted to chemical energy for converting carbon dioxide into carbohydrates. This overall reaction is very simple, though a lot of complex reactions must occur in a coordinated manner to produce carbohydrates. To produce glucose, which is C6H12O6, a minimum of 30 proteins work together within a complicated membrane structure. So what exactly happens when sunlight falls on the leaves? When sunlight strikes a chlorophyll molecule, the molecule absorbs light. These molecules could fluoresce, re-emitting the light. However, if all the chlorophyll molecules fluoresce, then the energy absorbed by it is lost and cannot be used to drive photosynthesis. 
Instead, these excited chlorophyll molecules transfer the energy to the chloroplasts to initiate the chemical reactions involved in the photosynthesis. Hence, the chloroplasts trap the light energy. Now you might want to know about how this happens. We will discuss this in brief. These chlorophyll molecules are arranged in groups called photosystems. Plants have two types of photosystems, photosystem 1 and photosystem 2. Details of the structure and functions of both the photosystems are not needed here, so we won't go into greater detail. But you may picture that each photosystem contains a central group of proteins called the reaction center, surrounded by several hundred chlorophyll molecules. Now, because the chlorophyll molecules are in a group, when one molecule releases energy on getting excited, it excites another adjacent molecule. In this way, energy passes back and forth till the time the energy reaches the reaction center. The reaction center contains a pair of chlorophyll molecules that behave slightly differently. Instead of transferring energy, they donate or accept electrons. In other words, they either oxidize or reduce the molecules. The chlorophyll molecules at the reaction centers are the strongest electron donors and acceptors used by organisms. As mentioned earlier, there are two different types of reaction centers in plants. In each of these reaction centers, the ejected electron is transferred to an acceptor molecule which can then pass it on to a different molecule and eventually the electrons can be used to fix carbon dioxide. However, the ejected electrons cannot be kept out from these special chlorophyll molecules. Electrons must be fed back to replace those ejected electrons. These electrons come from water, resulting in oxygen being evolved. Chlorophylls are of two types, chlorophyll A and chlorophyll B. Both the types of chlorophylls absorb the sunlight more strongly in the red and the violet parts of the spectrum. Green light is absorbed poorly. They both absorb the sunlight at different wavelengths. This is the only difference between chlorophyll A and B. In plants, chlorophyll A and chlorophyll B are present in the ratio of 3 is to 1. Thus, when white light falls on the chlorophyll containing structures like leaves, green light is not absorbed but reflected and hence the objects appear green. It is also important to note that chloroplasts also contain carotenoids. They absorb light more strongly in the blue part of the spectrum. Carotenoids are mostly found in fruits and flowers. The redness of a tomato, the orange color of the carrot, or the maroon color of the beetroot are all due to their carotenoids. In leaves, the carotenoids are usually masked by the chlorophylls. In autumn, in some countries, when the quantity of the chlorophylls decline, the carotenoids give the yellow or red color to the leaves. The picture below shows you plants that lose their leaves in the winter. They start breaking down chlorophyll in the autumn. This takes away the green color of leaves. Now one question will surely cross your mind that if this is all about chlorophyll and green plants then how does photosynthesis take place in plants having yellow or red leaves? You have already read about the two pigments chlorophyll and carotenoids. There is a third group of pigments known as anthocyanins. They absorb the blue, blue-green and the green lights. When leaves have higher concentration of anthocyanins, that is they absorb green light and reflect the purple and red compared to the other two, they appear purple or red to our eyes. So plants having less chlorophyll also undergo photosynthesis but at a higher rate in the shade as compared to in the sunlight. Some scientific terms. The wavelength of light. One of the characteristics of light is its wavelength typically measured in nanometers for visible light, or frequency, which is measured in hertz. One wavelength equals the distance between two successive wave crests or troughs. Photoreceptors are a structure in living organisms that respond to light falling on them. A membrane is a pliable sheet-like structure acting as a boundary lining or partition in an organism. To fluoresce means to shine brightly due to fluorescence. 
Spectrum is a band of colors like those seen in a rainbow, for example, produced by separation of the components of light by their different degrees of refraction, which is determined by their wavelength. Apart from the obvious requirement and benefits of chlorophyll in ensuring life on Earth, it also has a few other applications. Some of them are, it helps fight cancer, it can bind to potential carcinogens and interfere with how they are absorbed in the gastrointestinal tract. Helps in liver detoxification. It promotes liver health and helps in the elimination of potentially harmful toxins from the body. It speeds up wound healing. It slows down the rate at which harmful bacteria grow, helping in wound healing and preventing infections. It protects skin due to its antiviral effects. It improves digestion and helps in weight loss. A semi-synthetic mixture called chlorophyllin is made in laboratories to be used in supplements. This is marketed under the name liquid chlorophyll. These have been around for over 50 years and have been in use to treat skin infections, body odor, digestive problems, etc. After going through the guide and performing the activity, you will be well aware about the many facts about chlorophyll. Chlorophyll is a very important photosynthetic pigment. The green color actually comes from a single atom of molecule that's there in its very complex structure. This experiment has given you an insight about the process of photosynthesis and the role of chlorophyll in the same. It is a molecule that absorbs the sunlight and helps in preparing food for plants as well as for all living beings, either directly or indirectly. It is perhaps no coincidence that the most intense sunlight radiation is in the green color, which is determined by the black body radiation of the 6000 degree Kelvin solar surface. And hence, plants decided that that would be the best color to reflect, lest they burn off by absorbing too much green. Nature works in marvelous ways, and we hope you appreciate further the wonder of leaves and chlorophyll as you try and make this planet a greener and cleaner place to live in. Cherish the leaf. Cherish chlorophyll. Goodbye.